What is private equity investment and why is it uh, the same as privatisation? Well, private equity investment is privatisation just with another name. And the reason the government has given it another name is that Queenslanders have made it absolutely clear that the vast majority are against asset sales. So they're looking at ways to privatise our electricity network by stealth. Private equity investment is one of those means. What happens with private equity investments is that overseas uh, companies or private investors can give money uh, to Energex, Ergon or Powerlink and then those companies will use that money to build uh, or offset the cost of building future infrastructure uh, in return for profits. So what we have here is private sector coming in, buying into uh, our public companies and then taking a share of the profits. And there are profits to be had and this is one of the reasons why uh, we should be fighting this and calling it for what it is, which is straight out privatisation. Uh, because rather than seeing the profits that currently go back uh, to the state to be spent uh, on things like schools and hospitals, it will be going into the pockets of private shareholders, just like any other model of privatisation. Specifically when it comes to investing in the electricity network, these companies delivered $1.2 billion in profits back to the state government just in the last financial year alone, and that's only going to rise into the future. When it comes to investing in capital infrastructure, for every billion dollars that the Queensland Government has invested in the last 50 years, per year they have received $41.6 million in profits for every billion. So it really pays to make sure that we keep investing in our electricity networks in Queensland because it is profitable and that profit needs to come back to the public. The other thing that, about the Treasurer's statements is that it's particularly dis, uh, deceptive, not just because he's not mentioning um, how financially profitable it is to keep investing in Queensland networks, but the other thing is that uh, the debt that is brought on uh, for, to build future infrastructure isn't impacting the state government anyway. Energex, Ergon and Powerlink are all separate companies and they have separate books to the state government so any future infrastructure that they want to build, and the Treasurer has quoted the figure of $15 billion, that $15 billion is not on the state books. It's on the individual uh, businesses' books, so he's not being entirely uh, clear about uh, what happens with that debt. And even with that debt, uh, unlike roads uh, or hospitals, when it comes to the energy industry, that $15 billion, the vast majority of it, is going to be paid for by you or I because uh, electricity costs, uh, that cost to build poles and wires is passed on to us through our, the final electricity price. Okay, so uh, essentially private equity investment is privatisation. No, no, other mean, no other word for it. Um, and where it's been tried in other states, what's been the impact? So South Australia and Victoria are two that are notorious sure. privatisation. With private equity investments, which is privatisation, it's just privatisation by self, you get all of the same problems and outcomes that you do with privatisation, which is a loss of profits, you will see mass sackings, you will see a decline in services, as uh, rather than having uh, your networks built to uh, provide the best quality service, but they'll be built to uh, the cheapest level that's available in order to maximise profits for private shareholders. It's as simple as that. Everything is struggling and we are 20 years on and you can't say it's in the past because it's not, because it's impacting on the future. The privatisation side of it absolutely decimates the community. Before privatisation, Victoria had the lowest electricity tariffs in the world. We were promised um, lots of help 
offer and relocation of industry and it really didn't happen. The Gippsland region went from the highest employment area to the highest unemployment area in the state. The whole area just fell in a hole. The SEC workers, uh, their jobs were guaranteed with the new contractors, but that only lasted three years. That was when the real effects started to hit. After I took the package, there was about 10 years, there was virtually no work around the joint. I remember going to um, a meeting, I just remember two um, UK fellas, that, older fellas that got up and just spoke about their experiences in the UK, probably under Thatcher, and that it did privatisation didn't work and I remember they, they were more or less laughed off, you know, because people were saying, well that's not what we're being promised, that'll never happen to us. And lo and behold, it did, so yeah. I think all they were concerned about was some money, not about the people, not at all about the people. So the consumer is investing a lot of time and energy in identifying which contract might suit them, but in reality it doesn't really matter because the contract terms are changed um, at any rate after they've signed. The, uh, uh, the friendliness, the good customer relations that the old SEC had uh, disappeared. So one term government gets the benefit of the privatisation. From that point onwards, the higher cost inflation and the higher profit going offshore never ever sees the light of day in your state again. The majority of Victoria's electricity network assets are now owned by the Singapore government and the Chinese government. It's clearly about profit margins, isn't it, really? And um, you know, you have to ask at whose expense because it's coming at the community's expense where the private companies are increasing their profit through not maintaining as they should. But it's the community that has to pick up the shortfall. The firefighters are now being responded to calls that they don't normally would go to. Five out of 11 fires on Black Saturday were caused by electrical faults. Victoria's got this horrible proposition facing us in 2016, and that is a huge age profile bubble. The younger members coming through and the older workers at the other end, in the, in the middle is this massive hole. So they're going to end up flying four, five, seven visas in from Germany to do the uh, turbine shows. The, the skill factor's gone. The real tragedy of the situation that we have in Victoria is that so much money is being made um, by the private owners, very little of it is being reinvested back into Victoria. And all that money they made, it's all going overseas. Does the country no good? As the most recent report by um, Professor John Quiggan pointed out, there's been no net benefit to Victoria from the privatisation. Don't privatise. Don't privatise it.